Hello, and welcome to Gehenna Gaming, where we tell dark stories and support inclusivity in gaming. And welcome back to Massive Nyarlathotep. Last time, our intrepid investigators went down to Peru and discovered something in the ruins of a temple near Puno. What they found, they're not sure, but it has been four years since then, and recently, they each received a phone call or telegram from their old friend, Jackson Elias, asking them to meet at his hotel room at the Hotel Chelsea in New York City. Now, conveniently for most of our players, they are already in New York City, so this was very convenient for them. But before we begin, I just want to do a quick shout out to our sponsors for this episode, Eldritch Foundry, who we are giving away a $50 gift card for if you stay around till the end of this live stream. Norse Foundry, who are, we are giving away a set of dice for if you stay until the end of this live stream, and Drive Through RPG, whom we are giving away a PDF set of the starter set for Call of Cthulhu, or not the starter set, but the core box set. That's what they're doing this episode for the Call of Cthulhu 7th edition game. Now, before we jump in, I just want to go around and reintroduce you to our cast, uh, whose characters are four years older. Hello everyone, it's me, Rhea Sunshine, and I'm still playing Love LaRue. Four years later, she survived! <laughs> Hi, I'm Salem Sharp, and I am luckily still playing, and now officially, Dr. Oliver West. I'm Olufemi Showamimo, I am playing Adrian Beaumont, still, who, <laughs> despite my appearances, is 25. I think he's the youngest person here. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Sharon Paris, and I am playing Ophelia Click. And my name is Tyler Sutherland, playing Nicholas Porter. Fantastic. And I am Ian E. Muller, your keeper. Where we left off, you were all standing in the hallway of the Hotel Chelsea. The room numbers 410 illuminated in the fluorescent, well, was it fluorescent? Whatever. <laughs> uh, the gaslight <laughs> of the lanterns in the hallway. Listen, I'm jumping between systems here. The five of you may have seen each other over the past four years. Two of you, perhaps, more so. Um, but let's take a step back for a moment before we really enter this hallway and see where you've all been. Nicholas, what have you been up to for the last four years? I'm still working at the asylum uh, in Canton, Connecticut. I spend my nights there, I spend my days there. Um, I've connected a few times sparingly with the people around this table. Um, oftentimes with Dr. Oliver, who's been helping me with getting a little bit more exposure in the field as far as medical cases go. Uh, and one or two run-ins sparring with... Uh, our wonderful Adrian. Fantastic. I, I always win those because I'm, <laughs> I'm very good. Ophelia, what have I, you been up to? <clears throat> I have been working, keeping to myself. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, I've gone deeper into the occult and everything since I saw what I saw. Uh, so, not doing too great mentally, but, you know, I'm still working at the Guggenheim and keeping my head down. Okay. Adrian. <laughs> Tell us about the last four years. So, Adrian has largely been trying to avoid the responsibilities that his father is trying to thrust upon him, uh, grooming him to become the president and CEO of uh, their coffee industry. He's not quite ready for that. Instead, he's been sinking further into debauchery, drunken debauchery and partying, it generally just being a, um, um, an eligible bachelor, um, at least by day. Uh, but by night, he's, he's been, I don't know, indulging in more, more athletic pursuits, I, I guess. I guess I should say. Maybe I should just leave it there. <laughs> okay. Are you going to sound like some Jekyll and Hyde shit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the good doctor. Uh, Oliver has finally officially graduated medical school and has opened a practice in downtown New York. Um, 
most of which he caters to, um, given the the area that he and Love live in, uh, more of the upper middle, upper class um, by day. Uh, that being said, he does have a bit of a back alley practice uh, for those who are unable to afford regular medicine, like medicinal practices. Um, this is a bit more risky, so he has reached out to our good friend, Nicholas, uh, to provide a bit of security for mm. some cases. Um, Nick has been helping him with some psychology work. I've been helping him with more of the anatomy and physiology side of things, more of the pharmacology. Um, so we've had, I'd say, a rather mutually beneficial only uh, a few rough cases every now and then. Yeah, every once in a while we'll get, but that's why I have you. Hmm. Um, <laughs> that's that has been keeping him rather busy. Uh, is running this practice, and he is the only doctor who works there. He doesn't hmm. have any nurses. He only takes a few patients a day, and um, not to toot my own horn, but he's rather good at it. All right, and last but not least. It's me. Hello. So love over the last four years has gone through so many personal growths and changes as any like affluent woman would. But I think the most prominent one was that her husband unfortunately passed away. Aww. Yeah. Anyway, then everyone here received um, gifts. Mm. Nicholas received his wages for the trip to Peru, plus a bonus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ophelia received a beautiful, well-crafted, ornate crossbow with her name carved into it. Fancy. Adrian received a needle pointing kit, because I, bl- <laughs> I think... Whoever sent this to you definitely thinks he needs a hobby. <laughs> Can I gain points in needlework? You know what? Free? You know what? What's uh? What do you, you arts and crafts? I think is a thing on there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dead serious. Go ahead and give yourself. It's been four. Oh. How long ago would this have been? Like when in the four years? Within the year of leaving everyone in Perth. Oh, give yourself a good ten percent. All right. Ooh, go for it. Thank you. Stick with me, honey, and we'll survive. <laughs> But other than that, she's just been really getting to know herself, traveling a little bit, nothing much else. No gift for Oliver, obviously. No. Her presence is gift enough. (laughs) Well, the fact that she hasn't gotten into any trouble recently is my gift. Confirmed. Yes. Confirmed. Yeah. He he is not, she's, she's, (sighs) he's just happy that. She's happy, okay. and that she's getting over the death, this poor death of her husband. And let's just say the clinic is always very well funded. Of course. That's my gift. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Well, it's nice to see that you've all roughly stayed in touch um, and probably become slightly closer friends. We for, already for, for the time. Oh. Well, I don't like that. The one you haven't heard from much over the last four years is Jackson Elias. He stayed in touch. He's definitely reached out. You've gotten cards on birthdays, um, small presents, things of that nature. Um, Ophelia, you have gotten a signed copy of every one of his books. Oh, yay! Over the, <laughs> especially any new ones that he has published over the last four years. Awesome. Um, but since then, you've all received a telegram, or at least a phone call. No. I love props. <laughs> <laughs> and this has arrived within the last week for all of you. Carlisle Expedition. Should we read it aloud? Will Can we I? Leave that to you? Can please I? do. Yeah. Oh, please read it aloud. <laughs> <laughs> um, what does S1 mean? Okay. <laughs> Miss, Miss a tenor? I don't know that that's a person. January 3rd, 1925. Have information concerning Carla Expedition. Stop. Need reliable investigation. investigative team. Stop. Meet January 15th, New York. Stop. Jackson Elias. 
And go ahead and hold on to that. I'm actually 24. Aha! <laughs> uh-huh. so, yeah. Who knew? At a certain point, age doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I should have mentioned it is January. Ooh, it's cold. It is, and it is a frigid January for New York. Mm. It is very chilly. If you are not currently wearing your jackets, you probably checked them at the desk downstairs. And just to give you a little bit of setting, this is 1920, mid 1920s. New York City. What date is that? The Big Apple. What date? This is January. This was received January 3rd. Yes. Oh. And it is so, currently the 15th. It is currently yes. the 15th. Yes. So we got this a while ago. It was yeah, a little birth- over a week. Yeah. It was my birthday on the 8th. Ah. Oh. Oh. Happy yeah. birthday. Thank you. Perhaps you even saw each other. Maybe. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Let's not get that far. <laughs> So he has requested that you all visit him at his room at the Chelsea Hotel, room 410, at 8 p.m. on this day. Uh, if he, if you received a phone call rather than a telegram, um, he was pretty cryptid. Uh, or cryptic, cryptic, I should yes. say. <laughs> he was a cryptid. He, he was a pretty mothman. Uh, he's, he's more of a Jersey devil. Oh, no. um, and uncharacteristically anxious if you spoke to him. Um, Love, he probably definitely would have called you. Um, So I'll say who who do you think would have received a telegram versus a phone call just so I can give you a little more insight. Telegram. Telegram? Mm -hmm. I feel like I would have gotten a phone call. Yeah, especially because you're like local-ish. Yeah. I mean, you all are except for Nicholas, Mm -hmm. but you, yeah. you, you and Jackson probably saw each other mm-hmm. semi-regularly. I mean, I'm I'm pretty local and not that hard to find, so I suppose yep. he'd call me if as you, well. If you... Give me a luck roll. Ooh. Give me the first roll of this episode. Right. Uh, blah, 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 blah. No He's, pressure. It's a, it's a question of whether or not you were home when he called. Mm. That is a 62 under 70. Okay, so you were. Um, and Oliver, you probably received a telegram. Probably. I, I don't answer phone calls. Yeah. One uh, too many times of the cops call, calling, it was a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> so for those of you who received a phone call, uncharacteristically anxious. He seemed n- nervous, maybe almost frightened. Mm. There was a quiver in his voice that was unexpected. Um, and he really didn't say much. He just asked, he said, please come. Uh, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing you. I really need your help with this. And if you pushed, he said he had to go, and he hung up. Oh. Uh, and probably called one of the other people. I'm sorry. Just, he, he mentioned that he wanted to see all of us, right? But yes. It's not, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I think the brief conversation and the immediate hang-up is what ultimately makes Love's mind go, well, now I have to know what's going on. <laughs> And as I mentioned, this is the Hotel Chelsea. This is uh, in the Chelsea neighborhood in Manhattan. Um, uh, For those of you unfamiliar, that's around West 23rd Street between 7th and 8th. Um, It is a 12-story red brick, gorgeous building, magnificent staircase, lobby. The whole it's it very especially in the 20s, very picturesque. Um. And a significant number of the residents here are actually long-term residents. Mm. This is one of the, those hotels. Mm. So a good chunk of the people here stay here per- permanently. Mm. So you don't know if Jackson's residence here is a long-standing one that he just you know he uses when he's in New York because he travels so much, or if he's just mm. renting a room. Mm. Um, but let's zoom back in. Standing in the hallway the door to 410 in front of you. All of you feel a little anxious about seeing him. This isn't going to be Peru again, is it? I I hope not. I don't know what Carlisle is, but I don't think that's in Peru. Well, I'll, I'll say this much. I'm not a superstitious man, but I feel like when the five of us come together, it doesn't necessarily 
bode well. I, I hope you won't take offense to that. Because no. while I'm, I'm glad to see you all, I'm also not glad to see you all. No, the five of us together are cryptid magnets. We know. The last time all of us were in a room together, uh, a worm came out of a vat of fat and almost ate my sister's face. Mm. But that would have happened if there were four of us or three of you us. You hear a door down the hallway shut as one of the people who on this hall who was kind of eavesdropping on you was like, what the hell? And <laughs> <laughs> maybe I hope they saw my face. Cut the conversation to what's relevant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and for those of you with watches, it clicks to eight. I knock on the door. Immediately? Yeah. Okay, you knock on the door. Anyone who would like to give me a listen check as there is no response. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Again, it's in alphabetical order and I still lose Chris shit. Is <laughs> failure. Success by two. Okay. 42 over 27. Okay. Yeah, uh, 77 over, not that, uh, 35. Okay. <laughs> 19 under 24. Fantastic. Right. 52 under 60. So for love, Oliver, who was closest to the door, and Nicholas, mm -hmm. you hear shuffling. You hear movement. You hear multiple people. Mm -hmm. And you hear a window open oh. and the sounds of the alley outside as the street drifts in. Um, open the door. If we walk in on something kinky, I'm out. And I open the door. You open the door. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well. One second. Ooh. <laughs> Were we not supposed Wasn't to do that? that? You are absolutely <laughs> supposed to open the door. Um, I'm double checking to make sure it's locked. Do yeah, it's locked. Oh, oh. Ah, fuck. You don't do that. Um, um, when when I see um, Oliver struggling with the door, I will attempt to kick it down. Okay. So Oliver turns the knob. It is locked. You immediately say step back. and Because, I mean, these two also look concerned, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, what would that be? Uh, str pure strength roll. Oh. You got a strength um, of 36, blah, 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 please, by all means. I do. Oh, so my strength is 42. That is a... 30. Fantastic. You know exactly where to kick. You plant your foot against that space right to the left and above the lock, and you hear a crack as the door frame breaks, and the door pops open, and you hear a second crack as it hits something on the other side. Ooh. As you kick the door open, the first thing you see is the window, where a white man with a red bandana tied around his forehead with a long trailing ribbon looks up at you as he's climbing out the window mm. and then continues out. We are on the fourth floor. <laughs> you are on the fourth floor, yes. Is there anyone else in the... Okay, well, what did I, what did I hit on the other side of the door? You see a person pushing up off the ground who oh. was hiding by the door, and when you kicked it open just as they were moving, you hit them with the door. I would like to kick and them. Knock them over. <laughs> I, Wait, okay. who is it? <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm kicking them. No. <laughs> no uh, it is not Jackson Elias. I'll okay, feel that. free. <laughs> All right. Can I rush um, to the window? Oh, what, what does this oh. person look like? Uh, Dark-skinned, um, African features. Um, not not so much. You can tell, like, the difference to African-American, like, much more um, actually continental. And probably a shabby shoot, a shabby suit, um, and the similar head wear. Mm -hmm. This weird, like, red bandana with a long flowing ribbon off of it. Mm -hmm. um, so it actually, I mean... Since I already kicked and startled him, I'd rather subdue him. Okay. Uh, he is, he is like, on the ground pushing himself back up. You knocked him over, so right. he's already prone. You okay. pretty easily. So, yeah, uh, what would I roll in order to just try to put him in some kind of a hold so we... A uh, fighting brawl for okay. a grapple. Cool. So am I using my capoeira? Uh, yes, you are. Capoeira. Now I'll give him a little bit of a counter roll, but he is at a disadvantage here. It is 23 under 69. And nice. his is a 
fifty. Yeah, no, definitely. His is under half. Yeah, uh, and he oh, rolled, geez. and he failed. So oh. <laughs> uh, you quickly subdue this person. Um, basically, you practically just have to put a foot on his back and push him back down. You nice. stunned him with the door because um, it popped, hit him so hard. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, you did see another man going out the fire escape. And um, now that you've pushed the door the rest of the way open and stood on the person who was there, everyone else looking into the room, go ahead and give me a stability check. Oh, no. God. <laughs> Why that one? Adrian, you're still focused on the person <laughs> you're still doing. Stability, we have to roll over or under? You need to roll under. Under. Using my... You know, in Capoeira, when you grapple somebody, you go, la, 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 la. Like, oh, and so oh, I can't the beat the music to keep you in tempo. <laughs> exactly. Right. So silly. That's so silly. All right. Ooh, very nice. Love? Um, so I'm at 78 currently, and I rolled in 95. So how's that going? Oliver? <laughs> I rolled an 18 under 58. Okay. Yeah, you did. Ophelia? Um, 38 under 68. Nice. And mm. Nicholas. 98 over not 98. Oh. So for our two friends who passed. I'm stable. I'm still rolling. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's three. Three down? Yep. For us who passed? Yep. Oh. Uh, and um, Ophelia, what does that put you at? 65. And Oliver? 55. Okay, 65 and 55. Okay, for those of you who didn't pass. Oh. At least we're together. Six. Oh. Um, did you just roll a d20? No, I rolled a d6 again. <laughs> okay. And I rolled a six both times, but yours was halved. Wow. What are you at? Currently 72. Okay. Nicholas? 46. Okay. And I'm going to need both of you to roll intelligence checks now. Okay, this is the one. You want to fail it. <gasps> so smart. I know. Sucks. Intelligence is a brick. Nicholas? Oh. I got an eight. Uh, oh, under is... 70, so no. Uh, 43 under 65. Okay. Mm. All of you, except for Adrian, who's currently just distracted, see the body of your friend Jackson Elias on the bed. His stomach torn open. His intestines strewn about the bed, blood soaking into the mattress. This looks fresh. This looks like these men just killed him. The room is ransacked, but your Especially for Love and Nicholas, your thoughts are consumed with the sight of your friend brutally murdered on the bed before you. <clears throat> I can't fix that. Um, what the fuck? So while I'm, I assume I haven't noticed this yet. <clears throat> Excuse I, me. I think probably at the what the fuck okay. and the, the gasps, you oh, okay. probably look up and I'll need the same rolls from you. <laughs> but you can, say you can respond <laughs> as you go. Well, I would, can I say, before I look up, I'll say the window because I'm dealing with this guy and sure. then I'll look up and see what everybody's responding. Yeah, you say the window. Yeah. And. Arr, okay. Um, under my stability. That is a 46 under 46. I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> you also only take three. All right. <laughs> when he says window, can I attempt? I'm going to say attempt because I'm I, mm -hmm. to grab an article of clothing of the man. Going Already out, out the window. Oh, fuck. You are too late for that. Damn it. He is going down the fire escape. <sighs> Did I get a look, good look at his face? Yes. Lovely. Beautiful. Um. Mm. I'm not good at arts and crafts, so I'm not going to attempt to draw it, but I do have it up here, which is fine. Okay. Um, I'm going to go look at, at Jackson and try and see. Uh, I'm going to try and do autopsy work and see what exactly happened here. Okay, so let's, let's go around the room real quick. Love? I think Love, if she's capable of moving, 
uh, is just kind of passively walking towards Jackson right now. Okay. Just very slowly. Oliver, you... Autopsy work. Move with love, I'll say. Yeah. Adrian, you are still subduing the person on the ground. Yeah, I, when I have a chance, I will kick him now that I know he's been involved in the murder of this guy. And Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. Uh, oh, what will that, that will be by brawl damage? Yep. Which is 1d3, so that's going to be a d6 mm-hmm. divided by 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, five, so is that rounded up or down? Uh, that's going to round down. Okay. So two. So two. Uh, and I'll just kind of, through gritted teeth, say, why? Mm. Ophelia? Yeah, same question. Like, wh- I want to interrogate this dude okay. and be like, why? Who are you? Okay. And Nicholas? I don't hear any of this. I'm bolting straight for the window. Okay. I'm going to start with Nicholas. You bolt to that window. He is just out of reach Mm -hmm. when you get there. He is making his way down the fire escape. You see a third man farther down on the fire escape. Similarly dressed, similar headwear. Do you pursue? I do. Okay. As fast as I can. Do you open? F- do you have a gun? I do, but I'm not shooting. Uh, you're not. You're not thinking about. You're not thinking about. I just want to get my hands okay. on this man. <laughs> I'm gonna have you roll a climb roll because Ooh. it is January in New York City. Climb. This is a metal fire escape, and yeah. as the minute you step foot on it, it creaks, yeah. and it is icy. Uh, it's a 29 over 20. Do you uh. want to push it? Ooh. Not with a base 20, no. Do you okay. wear gloves, Mr. Porterman? Yes. He does. Do. Mm-hmm. He is, in fact, wearing gloves. Okay. That's what they're called. <laughs> you do not catch up to them, okay. but you don't fall. Oh, okay. Four stories. <laughs> what is your size? Big. I know. Uh, 70. 70. Mm. Okay, one second. One near left the tip. Two near left. You the hear a groaning creak as the fire escape shifts away from the wall hmm. and then stops. Hmm. Are they still in the fire escape? One of them is. Can I take it the, with uh, me? The other you want to take it away from the wall? I want to hold on to the fire escape and just shimmy it. Not as tearing it away from the wall, but I want to stumble him <laughs> as he's trying to go down and scurry down the stairs. Give me a strength check. <laughs> Going the other down. person is jumping off at the very bottom, so I'm going to say if yeah. you roll well enough, you get both. Okay. Uh, it's just a regular success. Regular success? What'd you get? 56 under 62. Okay. You grab the wall, like the window frame, mm-hmm. and you grab the um, fire escape, and you just give it a good jostle. And the entire thing shakes. And I'm going to need a luck roll from you. Okay. As the person who... the was climbing down the fire escape directly below you, who was only made it one floor down, hmm. slips and falls. That's good. Hey, that's good. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> uh, it's a 46 uh, under um, or over 45. Oh. And you push. cannot push a luck roll. No, you yeah. oh. can't. Can I? You hear another groan. Hmm. And part of the fire escape tears away from the wall, okay. creaking and collapses and I'm going to roll a luck roll mm. to see if it hits the person on the ground. Who? Oh. <sighs> what do you mean? <laughs> Was that a good who or a bad who? The fire escape falls and hits him, but he as he's diving out of the way of it you see a large gouge down his side, blood splatter across the snow on the ground. The person on the fire escape directly below you is holding on for dear life mm-hmm. as this fire escape slides and shakes now. Okay. What, uh, what are you doing now? Mm. You see the guy on the ground running towards a car. Um, it's a black 1915 Hudson Touring Roadster. Um, You get a good look at the license plate. Mm -hmm. It's NYL7. Um, And it is idling. It is running. 
you don't know if there's a driver inside or if they just left it there, but... It's just an unconnected car. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to jump back into the room now. Adrian, the person on the ground starts to fight back. Uh, so I'm going to need a opposed grapple fighting brawl mm-hmm. check from you to maintain your grip on him, or he's going to fight you. That is a 25 under 69. That is significantly better than his 72. <laughs> um, you can choose to do damage to him again, or you can choose to restrain him again. Uh, oh, I can't do both. Would it be another roll to, to do both? Uh, I would. You can. So you can choose <coughs> to just restrain him, or you can choose to hurt him. I'd like chance of him. killing or knocking him unconscious, and then you can choose to grapple him again. Gotcha. He's not. He's not going to get away. Sure. You're just. You, I'm just giving you the option to hurt him because yeah. you're angry. I'd like to teach him a lesson about um, fighting me. Go ahead and give me that <laughs> uh, is, damage roll. Murder. Here, go ahead and give wrong. me a damage roll. And again, just roll. Mm-hmm. That is a six, so three. three. Uh, so I believe you've done five to him total now? Correct. Yeah. Okay, give me one second here. I don't actually know how much he has. I'm going to find out real quick. <laughs> Oh, antagonists are towards the back. Here we go. By the way, I will say, you do know that Oliver constantly keeps sedatives on him, should you call my name. I'm otherwise imposed, (laughs) but, I mean, Jack, no one's dead until they're warm and dead, and Jackson's pretty fucking dead. He looks uh, pretty battered at this point. You kicked him pretty much in the head. And when he struggled to get away, you just dropped a knee down on him. You, you completely winded him, may have broken some ribs. He's pretty roughed up. Okay. And I will say, that was me asking politely. For the rest of you in the room, what are you doing? Uh, I've, you do not need a medicine to roll to know he is very dead, and it just happened. Can I see... What exact the, the wounds on his stomach are it's they actually inspecting the wounds, looking yes. what did they do it with? Okay, uh, like are they jagged? Are they precise? Was there hesitation? Mm-hmm. I also assume that Oliver has seen being a back alley doctor in New York has seen a lot of stab wounds. You have this was definitely made with a, uh, a blade. Do you want me to make a medicine check or a biology check? Not yet. Okay, this definitely is not first aid. I can't fix this. <laughs> no. He's this is like, like 12th aid. <laughs> it's yeah. fine. I have a band-aid. He'll get better. This is this is six feet under aid. <laughs> yeah, um, sorry. Connecting the Just, So, coming back in. You take a look at his body. The wounds were made with multiple blades. One of which was a machete. The other one appeared to be some kind of hooked blade, much larger than like a scalpel or a kitchen knife, but not as large as a machete, but it definitely has a bit of a curve to it. Mm. Um, Now that you're at him, you can also clearly see carved into his chest a symbol, and it's two crescent moons facing each other with kind of a bit of a star like, so it's like two large crescent cuts carved in, and then two horizontal lines that don't connect in the middle, and then a couple like mm-hmm. diagonal ones coming out from it, and then some smaller. Like it's really bloody; it's hard to fully make it out. Um, I will take out my notepad that I keep on me to take patient notes. And I will sketch what I see. Okay. Um, I'm not going to touch him without gloves. Um, I'm sure I have some on me. Um, but I, I, I know that this is probably going to end up being a murder investigation. And yeah. I don't want yeah. my fingerprints here. Good, good call. Um, good call. Good call. It, it's not a super accurate thing at the time, but yeah. I'm not going to take that chance. Um yeah, I'm, I'm just going to sketch as, as much as I can, and... Can I maybe see if I remember seeing that occult um, symbol somewhere? Mm-hmm. Give me a library use roll. Yes, I'm useful. <laughs> <laughs> 80... What is... 86 
over 75. I do love Ophelia's dice. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> you walk up. You hear, you all hear the signs of struggle, uh, be, both behind you and from coming out the window. But you walk over and you take a quick look. The symbol doesn't immediately strike you as familiar, but maybe in one of your recent f- talks with Jackson, he m- described something similar. Okay. Hard for you to put your finger on right now. Awesome. Jumping back to our friends outside. <sighs> what are you doing? I can't do anything about the guy on the ground or the car. He's so. r- he is running towards the car. He is slipping. It is icy and snowy. But there is someone still on the fire escape. And you see the guy look up at you, look at the fi- the fire escape, which is now precariously hanging away from mm-hmm. the building, and look at the ground. It's very clear he's thinking about just jumping. Uh, I just whisper as deep as I can, just don't move. And I'm going to try to, like, intimidate him or um, to threaten that I'll shake the... Uh, Okay. Ladder again. Go ahead and give me an intimidation roll. Right. Moves the fire escape for emphasis. Uh, no, that is a 97. Oh, come on. Uh, over 35. All right, well, you know, you keep going down by one. So. <laughs> <laughs> by the <laughs> end of this session, we'll have a success. <laughs> he looks at you mm. and then makes for the ladder mm. to go down to the next level. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to follow him. Okay. I'm going to need another climb check from you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that's a five. Oh. You slide. The, 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 the stair, this ladder is uh, icy, and you have gloves and boots on. You mm. just slide down it, and I'm going to give you an option. Okay. If you jump, you can tackle him, and you will both land on the first level of the fire escape. Okay. It may break mm. and fall down on top of you. Or you can continue chasing him, but you are catching up. Okay. I'm going to continue chasing him. Okay. Give me another climb check. Can you? I've never been so stressed about another person's <laughs> rolls. So cool. uh, 46, so no. 46 over... 20. Okay. You go to run, you slide across the metal, you catch yourself as you watch him slip and fall. Uh He slips going down the ladder, Mm -hmm. falls, and lands heavily on the first, the the last, the bottom level of this fire escape. Okay. Take a knife out and just drop it. (laughs) And you hear that creak again, and you hear the tearing of metal. Uh -uh. It's a good time to jump. Are you jumping free of the fire escape? I'm going to try to land on him. So if you land on him, the fire escape is going to land on top of you. That's not good. Or you can jump free of the fire escape and probably take less damage, I'm going to be honest. Let's take the better option. Okay. So you <laughs> die free of the fire escape. Yes, please. All right. I'm just going to roll damage for you. I'm going to promise it's not a lot. <laughs> that was a wonderful, like, GM. <coughs> <laughs> Two. Hey. Hmm. That's good. As you... S- See, as you die free of the fire escape and you see it collapse on top of him and you see mm. a chunk of steel slide through his torso. Oh no. And the sound of a motor gunning. Okay. Adrian. Oh, um, what's this guy doing? <clears throat> Fighting back. At my feet. Okay. <laughs> Do me a favor. Sure. Do you have psychology or psychoanalysis? No. Zero in both? Correct. Well, well base. A, a one and a ten. Go ahead. Which one do you have ten in? Uh, psychology. Go ahead and roll it. Okay. I have a feeling I know where this is going, but, but Adrian doesn't. Norse Foundry, bless us. So, that is a 06 and a five. Oh, wait, no, that's a 90 oh. and a five. I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say. And that's a, uh, okay. Uh, 95. Over ten. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, he comes at you again, <coughs> and you see him start to pull a weapon this time. He's mm-hmm. trying to grab a knife that was hidden in his waistband. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and he looks like... <laughs> I'm not trying to pressure you. I sense that. Okay. <laughs> I am going to kick him. Because <laughs> I, I don't think... So I can't do... Well, 
Could I? You know what? I'm just going to do it. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> overthink it. I am going to kick him. Okay. As I kick him, I, I'll say, uh, Oliver. I think this guy needs to take a nap. Fair. Um, so Capoeira. Okay. That is a 33, under 69. So it's a half success. He also rolled a 33. <gasps> mm. However. His is his uh, mm, mm, his brawl is not good. So. <laughs> Let me get the exact number here. <laughs> what a nerd! What are, you, what are you doing, buddy? Listen. What are you doing to me, buddy? Okay, he he still passes. <coughs> what was what was yours under? A sixty-nine. Yeah, so his is not. <laughs> um, so that's gonna go to you because he's not trying to get away. He's trying to fight. Sure. Um. So you kick him again, um, and I you know, kick him. <laughs> you know what? I'll uh, let's say while he he pulls out the knife, I actually I get up and use one foot to like stomp on his hand so it's stuck on the ground, mm. and then I'm just gonna do one of <laughs> one of those. Okay, roll damage. Backhand him. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> that's a two. So oh, I'm sorry, that's a one because okay. it's uh, half of that. But I mean, I don't want to murder this guy. Okay, so you stomp on his hand. You hear the bones crush under your boot. And then you backhand him right across yes. the face and stun him a little bit. Oliver? I'm pulling back morphine. Okay. Let's see if you can actually stab a struggling man. I <laughs> pull back enough that will not kill him. Mm. I'm making this perfectly clear. Mm. You learned your lesson in Peru, I, I see. I did. I did. I did. I'm not doing this again. Okay. I pulled back enough to knock him on his ass. Okay. I'm gonna At need least. A, I'm going to need a fighting brawl roll from you. Oh. Oh, Can I help it. in any way? You just okay. did. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got it. No, I don't. 94. It's a little over 25. Are you sure? Let me, let me I'm going to push this. I, oh. I don't want to stab Adrian. Okay. That's my thing. Okay. I don't, don't want to. Here's the thing. I'm going for needle, not plunger. So here's the thing. I'll tell you right now. He would have smacked it out of your hand. He has a free arm. Or you can push it, and if you fail the push, you will stab Adrian. Will I? I'm not going to I know. inject I'm Adrian. I'm just going to stab him? Correct. Sorry. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I got a two. <laughs> oh. And... He goes, he gets his arm over and he smacks at you as you reach down and you just deftly swing it around and right in the neck. Tonk. Plunger. Takes a second. But you see him start to struggle less. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Nighty-night. And the room goes quiet. And then all of a sudden you all hear a tearing metal sound ripping from outside as the fire escape comes ripping away from the brick wall (sighs) crashing down into the alley outside can someone go make sure that nick's okay so yeah i will run through the window window. and look out you both get to the window (laughs) as you watch nicholas picking himself up out of the snow a good distance away from the fire escape actually dusting himself off and an impaled person. I've been impaled. (laughs) In the rubble of the fire escape. Twisted metal below it. A large piece of the fire escape jutting through his chest. And a black car peeling away from the scene. Almost hitting some people on the sidewalk outside as people start to gather looking down the alley. We are on the fourth floor. Um... While Love has been, like, kind of huddled over Jackson staring at him, could she use sleight of hand to kind of find anything that he was trying to hide in his bed without being noticed by the police? 100%. Go ahead and give me a sleight of hand roll. Okay. Okay, here we go. You are lying. I have to push this. (laughs) (laughs) That's wild. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> it's more. <laughs> it's still in the 80s. Why did it go up? 
Okay. Things. Okay. So <clears throat> you are. That's gone. You are stunned. You don't know what to do with this. You, your friend, whom you have kept in touch with, his body mutilated in front of you, his stomach torn open, this strange symbol carved into his forehead. Um, Was it on his forehead or his chest? Forehead. <laughs> okay. I said chest earlier. That <laughs> you did? I yeah. just want to make sure that my notes are correct. Forehead. I apologize. I think the way uh, this manifests as a failure is that love is now crying mm-hmm. and they're falling all over the bed and mm-hmm. uh, Jackson. Yep. Love. <gasps> hey, step away. What? <laughs> Come on. Nicholas, mm-hmm. outside, you see this man bleeding out. He may already be dead. You're not 100% sure. Um, he definitely took a very large piece of steel straight through his torso. Um, and the black car that was idling starts to pull away, the other person having gotten inside. I'm going to stabilize him as best as I can. and take off my jacket and just try to put pressure on the wounds mm-hmm. until someone gets here. Is okay. it the thing impaling him, though? Yep. Yep. Are you going to push him further down? Yeah, are you going to take it out and then... No, you never know, take yeah, something yeah, I know, out. I know. <laughs> you know those like pieces of metal that are like an, a, a bracket and then just really long and there's like mm-hmm. holes in it for you to like rivet them together and stuff? This mm-hmm. is similar to that. It is a long piece of steel that is that tore off and it ripped a pretty decent sized hole in his chest. Mm-hmm. I, you don't think he's going to make it. He did. I'm going to give you the that information straight up. Okay, good to know. I, in that case, will... And it's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's looking up at you with glazed over eyes. He did. Uh, he's, not, he's not dead yet. Uh, oh, that's terrible. Okay. It's kind of that, like... <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> I'm going to take the red bandana mm-hmm. that he had and just say, <clears throat> what is this and you, hold it right up to his face he doesn't he opens his mouth um start coughs up some blood mm. doesn't respond i give him a good jostle on the bar and oh. i say again <laughs> oh. what is this and he starts speaking in a language you don't understand um would would Ophelia recognize these bandanas? No. Okay. While you're searching for that page, can I ask, can those of us who were looking out the window, did we see the car starting to mm-hmm. take off? Okay. And you saw the license plate number as well. Okay. I, I'd like to rush down the stairs while, while this is... So you are going out the room, out the door. Yes. Okay. You pass a couple of people in the hallway who have heard the commotion, but they haven't ventured down yet. Um, they, they glance at you, you think back of your head, they could probably ID you, but you're not super concerned about it right now. Are you trying to catch up with the car? Yeah. So I presume, and I'm sorry, your driver would be out front. Yes. I, I'm presuming I can get down to my driver and hop in my car and chase after it. And with it being pretty snowy, are there, are there tracks? Uh, I mean, it, this isn't, it's only 8 PM and it's oh, okay. New York city okay. and it's downtown man. It's Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Sure. So... It's busy, mm-hmm. um, but you, it it's a distinguishable car. You 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 would think you would recognize it. You did see the license plate. You think you could catch up with him. Your driver's good. Yeah. Remind me of your driver's name again. His name is. Do, 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 do. Oh come on. It's it's not Mac, is it? Is it Mac? No. Mm-hmm. Oh, got it. I, I, I had it Gus, too. Gus. 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 Gus McEnroe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Gus McEnroe. Ah, oh, okay. So, <laughs> I'm going to ask you to roll a check sure. to see how fast you can get down to your car, but you are very athletic. I don't think this is going to be an issue for you. I just need a dexterity check. Okay. You say that, but we failed so <laughs> many rolls we're good at today. Yep. On that note, I'm going to jump back over to Nicholas mm. really briefly. When you shake the bar, mm. his jacket falls open. The suit just sh- shabby. Mm-hmm. Not that much worse than yours, but not great suit jacket. Kind of falls open, and you can see some papers hastily stuffed into the inside pocket. Okay. Newspaper clippings, maybe something. 
I reach in and take those. Uh, give him a quick glance if I can. Okay. Um, let's see what Mr. Oh, what's this one's name? Let's see what Mr. Doyle had on him. Doyle probably grabbed. Um, hmm. You see a photograph? Um, an actual photograph? You're not 100% sure. Hmm. As well as a. Um, ba, 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 ba. No, I'll leave that upstairs. A letter. Okay. So it's a photograph, um, possibly pulled from a newspaper. You're not 100 percent sure, and a letter, typewritten, folded. Folded. Okay. Not. A little bit of blood on it. Not wax sealed or anything. Nope. Okay. Uh, very quickly, because things get moving fast. I look to see who the letter's addressed to. The letter uh, is addressed to Jackson. Okay. Alas, from a Miss Atright. From Cambridge, Massachusetts. Okay. I don't know. So, yeah, you find a letter and a photograph. You don't have too much time to glance at them now, but I will describe them very briefly for, okay. um, for our audience at home and our other players. The photograph is a ship. It's, um, hmm. Maybe a, it's blurry. It's not a great photograph. It's maybe a steam or diesel powered yacht. Um, surrounded by some Chinese junkers. Um, you can see part of the name of the yacht on there, but um, and you see a large tower in the background. You're not sure what, what it is. Uh, the other item is a letter. Uh, it's addressed to Elias, care of Prospero House. Hmm. Um, you're not 100% sure. Uh, I'll just say this now. Um, when I'm assuming you share them with everyone, Ophelia, you would know immediately Prospero House is the publishing mm -hmm. publisher for his books. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just start reading the letter real quick. Uh, if or when I see Adrian make it downstairs, I'll start reacting. Okay. I'll say you are down an alley. Alley, okay. Um, you probably wouldn't see Adrian come out unless you move to the head of the alley, um, where there are some people starting to gather. Uh, in that case, I'm just still in that uh, stability shock. So I'm just focused right now on the scene. Okay. Jump me back upstairs. Adrian, you go running. What did you get on your roll? I failed. Originally, I got a 73 over 70, so I, I pushed. I okay. I'd be okay. And I re-rolled, and I got a 26. Fantastic. 70. You race down the hall, push past the people, hit the stairs, and you just take them five at a time. That the athleticism, the capoeira, the other activities you've been up to lately give you that focus and you are down the stairs into the lobby pushing past people out the door. Gus sees you and is ready to go. Nice. I'm going to leap into the car and say follow that car <laughs> and give him the I'll give him the badge that, well I, I'll give him more than that but something dramatic and cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. Follow that car and you give him the, the brief description yeah. the license plate which yes. is the important detail and he peels out turns and goes the direction the car went. Okay. And while, while he's driving and I'm in the back seat I'm going to to change clothes. Okay. <laughs> um, back upstairs. Love, Ophelia, and Oliver. What are you doing? I'm pulling Love away from Jackson, okay. and I'm giving her a job. I'm. This man on the floor has to stay this way. Got it? Okay. I. We'll see if he had anything on him, but I, let's be honest, I'm better at compartmentalizing than you are. Let me handle it. Go watch shit face McGee over there. Yeah? Okay. Can you do that for me? I can watch him. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just shocked. Don't think about it, just do. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, love will turn to start walking over and uh, her face is pointed towards the ground to hide it, kind of. And if you could see her face, it looks very different than the love that everyone knows. It's very angry. 
Mm. I know this love. And she sits down behind the man who's knocked out. She takes her arm, both of them, and wraps them around his neck and his legs, or her legs around his waist. Okay. And just waits for him to move. Okay. Ophelia, what are you doing? I'm um, <clears throat> still looking out the window, mm-hmm. um, trying to make sense of everything, and also um, the symbol and the people's outfits, because it feels familiar to me. Go ahead and give me an occult roll. Yay. Yeah, 27 under 60. 27 under 60. It's not so much that you remember something about these items, but it clicks. If Jack if Jackson Elias was murdered, it's because he was onto something, mm-hmm. which means he probably has his research in this room. Ooh. Do you want to take a look around? Yeah. Go ahead and give me a spot hidden roll. While she's doing that, can I pick up where Love left off and examine Elias, or, uh, yeah, Elias to see if he had anything on him? Yeah, sure. What am I rolling, dear GM? Uh, spot hidden. Okay. I got a 69 um, over 27. Do you want to push it? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. What? Okay, so if I push it, what am I doing? Just roll again. Apologies. And do better. <laughs> yeah, roll again and do better. Why do you have to say that? You, uh, 92. <laughs> this is what happens when you disobey. <laughs> 92. <clears throat> okay. Um, you can't find anything. Yeah. You, you don't know where he would hide these things. You mm-hmm. don't know where to look, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Story of my life. Um, Oliver. I got a 48, and my spot hidden is 48. Oh. You pass that to Oliver. I don't even want to look at it. Oh, shit. I'm looking at it. Sorry, Oliver wears glasses. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Damn. Does he have anything else? I mean... Does he have anything else on him? Yeah. Yeah. You start going... Th- uh, what did you get on your roll? Sorry. Uh, 48, and I got my spot hidden is 48. You start going through his pockets, and you find three things. I love props <laughs> so much. You know, I was looking at this upside down, and I was like, ooh, what is this What is this writing that we're going to need to decipher? <laughs> <laughs> Some strange language. Oh. <laughs> um, Please immediately go. For pocket. Ophelia. You start going through the room, mm-hmm. and you're not finding anything, and it's really frustrating. And then you see a stack of books, and they're not his books. Oh, like not his books that he wrote, Correct. but like other books. Okay. Yep. Oh, I look through them. Do you look through them, or you just grab them? Look through them. Okay. You hand that yeah. to a good. That falls out of one of them as you're picking it up. Now, swinging back around the room, Oliver, mm. the photo that I handed you is what you see on Jackson Elias. Mm-hmm. The symbol carved into his head, forehead. Very vivid. Mm. And as you turn your attention to his jacket, his pockets, you see a bit of a rectangular misshapen shape in one. Um, and when you grab it, you also find two business cards. Can you tell me what they are? This one says Emerson Imports, 648 West 47th Street, New York. Okay. And this one is for the Fenhue Foundation. This is for the director. 
but the Emerson Imports has a name on the back. It says Silas Nakam. I can't. Nakamwa? N apostrophe. Inquana. Inquana. And then a matchbox for the stumbling tiger that I assume would be in Chinatown. That's probably a pretty good guess, yeah. Um, in fact, you might think you've seen it before. Um, you're not 100% sure. Um, it might be familiar. You could take a look. You've been to Chinatown a few times, and you know, good, there's good cheap places to get food there. It's also a good place to get medicine. Like, oh yeah, for sure. You get a, you probably get a lot of your supplies great, from China, down in Chinatown. Great shit. Hundred percent. Okay. Um, Olivia, or uh, sorry, Ophelia. What did you find? I found this pamphlet for um, a two-hour lecture <laughs> with slides by professors of the University of Sydney and. Loxley Fellow of Polynesian Esoterica at Miskatonic University um, at Schuler Hall, New York, NYU, New York University at 8 p.m. tonight. Mm. Oh, shit. Do it we, is 8. Do we go? Well, it's a little after 8 at this point. Fuck. You've already been here for about 15 minutes. 15? That's it? Yeah. <laughs> so Fights much happened. happened fast. <laughs> I Love. bet he was just interested in talking to the lecturer, not actually attending it. So we could probably catch whoever they are after the lecture. But I kind of want to go to the... <laughs> well, you're already missing it. But I it's think... a two-hour lecture, so I only miss, like, however long it takes us to get to NYU. I think That's holding funny. the murderer of our friend is a bit more important. Yeah? But I feel like this will lead us to the murderer, because it's obviously a... I... <laughs> I point to the unconscious man that love is grappled. I mean, one did get away. Yeah, like three, two got away. Well, one's one dead. dead. <laughs> okay. Yeah, one, one got, got away. away to Jesus. Speaking of <laughs> love, you're holding this man. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. You can kind of see inside his suit jacket. You see something else tucked in there. I'm going to just quickly, since I have both arms up around his neck. Mm -hmm. Just slip my hand into the jacket, pull it out, and hold it up next to my face. One moment. So mm -hmm. please, please don't be a worm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm begging. <laughs> One moment. Just making sure I have everything mm -hmm. here. Um, oh, you know what? I meant to give one of those business cards to you. I apologize. Which one? <laughs> uh, go ahead and give the uh, Penhu Foundation one to love. Uh, so the Penhu Foundation was in, in the this unconscious guys. Mm -hmm. And then Emerson Imports was in. With the uh, matchbook. <laughs> She's holding him. <clears throat> and she... Uh, Ophelia, you might recognize this. The Pen... Penhu Foundation. The Penhu Foundation by Edward... That name, and she just like <laughs> throws the card with one hand. Hey, uh, love, go ahead and give me a um, a dexterity check. Oh, sick. <laughs> of course, uh, fourteen hundred fifty-five. Ophelia, that card flies straight at you. You that couldn't have been more accurate if it was a bullet, and you just <laughs> it, it almost hits you when you catch it. You're like. <laughs> Um, would they, would this foundation have um, donated some things to the museum? Do I work in an art museum? What, what museum do I work in? You work in, in a, uh, the Guggenheim. The museum. Guggenheim. It's mm -hmm. a natural history and art. Okay, so. Would Go this, ahead and give me an occult role. Mm -hmm. Would this foundation have donated some artifacts to the. 54 um, under 60. You do recognize the name. Not because they've donated to the museum. They're an occult thing? 
you've noticed it in a few books. Mm -hmm. uh, you do recognize that as something Jackson has mentioned okay. to you in some of your previous conversations. And not this, not the man's name, but the Penhue Foundation. And this was in that dude's mm -hmm. suit jacket. In his suit jacket. Mm -hmm. So we can say that he probably works for this foundation? Or was hired by this foundation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we need to go to this foundation? With well, poison? It is in London. <laughs> Oh, it's in London. Oh, it is in London. <laughs> so maybe not immediately, but you know, if that's where you decide you want to go, you can go to London. Start swimming. <laughs> is this guy conscious at all right now? I mean, y'all choking him out so much. You're not choking him, but I did give him a. I mean, oh, love can yeah. choke him if she wants to. Good. <laughs> yeah, he's out. He's uh, honk shooing away. Do you want to take some sheets and tie him up? That of way course. you can have your hands free. I'm going to tie him up, and one of the loops I make with the sheets is around his neck so that if any time he moves, it starts to choke him. Gotcha. You yep. seem awfully adept at this. <coughs> I've been married. <clears throat> We're going to stop there because you are my sister. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you do now? Um... I think we should leave. Yeah, before cops get here. What should we do with him? Do we want to talk to him at some point? I feel like we should. Um. Can I take his bandana? Mm. I feel like this is going to be useful. Probably. We'll just... Okay. So... Are you taking him with you? <laughs> I will uh, say, you are pretty sure that you can get away mm -hmm. before the cops get here. You are pretty sure carrying an unconscious body <laughs> with you right. will not allow that to happen. Yeah. So now you can so you can you can take him mm -hmm. and increase your risk of get, getting caught. I'll give, I'll let y'all roll for it. Mm -hmm. Or you can leave him for the police. Let the cops take care of it. Let's leave okay. him. Yeah, I let's think go. we've gotten all we need. No, there's this old 1915 movie called Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not there. <laughs> Damn it. Smash cut to the car with Adrian changing. Where, Adrian, <laughs> so you change clothes in the backseat as, yes. as Gus is chasing these guys down. Damn. Now, Absolutely. I'm going to make some rolls here real quick. Oh, I'm going to have you roll for Gus, though. Oh, okay. So what I need from Gus is... Let's see. Right? Um... Drive auto. Oh. Okay. I just need you to roll. I rolled a 51. A 51. Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> this may be really funny. I would like you to thank Tyler. <laughs> Please thank Nicholas for killing the only one that had a drive rating. <laughs> <laughs> so you, Gus, like an arrow down the road, dodging people on the sidewalk, pop dodging black ice. He is gunning after these people, and he does not care if anyone notices that he is driving aggressively and fast. Awesome. And you see this other car speeding down the road, fishtailing, hitting every patch of black ice, not definitely not getting away from you. And Gus glances into the mirror and says, what do you want me to do, boss? Hold it, hold steady next uh, alongside him. If he doesn't hit me, <laughs> and you see him weave up pretty gracefully, pull up right next to this car. The car fishtails, he slides to the right and then back in once it stabilizes. What are you doing? Um, so I guess we can say I'm, I'm finished changing. <laughs> you are finished changing, yes. <laughs> so I'm wearing, uh, does that look so good? Oh, yeah. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> I'm no. wearing a full, very uh, rather ostentatious white outfit. I've got a, the, the last thing I'll put on is a white domino mask. Mm -hmm. I've got um, kind of holsters on either side for my guns. Um, <laughs> so I look like the shadow except all white, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to 
roll down the window and point a gun at a tire and fire at it. All right, give me a firearms roll. I love this so much. I'm really going to need you to come with a white fedora and a white domino. Yeah, you're going to need I'm sorry. to. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Step your game up. That is a 40 under 55. Nice. Okay. Lovely. Bam. You blow out the back uh, passenger side tire. Nice. The car fishtails even harder. Gus uh, very deftly breaks and pulls to the right so it doesn't hit you, but also doesn't send you lurching since you are now partially out of a window. And the car 180s, 360s, 720s, into a building. Nice. You're not going to keep going with the numbers? (laughs) (laughs) How good is your multiplication? (laughs) Listen, I understand how these things work. (laughs) I don't. So a uh, 720 is when you 360. <laughs> <laughs> I literally would have just been like the car spins. <laughs> um Okay. Cool. Um are the windows tinted the the other guys windows no. and all? Okay. Um so can I see is he what is he doing in there? Is he rattled? Is he, he like he's definitely to get he definitely seems rattled. He's starting mm-hmm. to pull himself together. Um, there's only the one guy in the car. They must have just left it running. Um, he is kind of pulling himself together, reaching for the door handle, trying to get out of the car. So I will I will step out of the um, out of my car mm-hmm. and I will fire twice, like at the door, not not through the door, at the door to let him know like I'm serious and I'm here. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna make you roll for the fire. Fire, firing your gun. Um, that is a 39 under 55. 39 under 55. Okay. You dive out of the way as he... You definitely twist out of the way as he throws the door open trying to hit you with it. And he scrambles out trying to run. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is just trying to get away. Okay. He does not listen. He does not pay attention mm-hmm. to the firearm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to attempt to uh, to trip him. Okay. Uh, it's just a capoeira, I presume. Yep. Don't fail me now. That is a seven. Graceful. I'm not giving him a dodge roll. <laughs> uh, you. He slides on the ice. You take the opportunity. You kick the leg out from under him. He goes down hard. Roll damage. Sure. Uh, one. Add a, a D4. Three. Add a D4 to it. Cool. <laughs> oh, nope, that's a four. Okay, mm-hmm. so three divided by two rounded down is a one, but then I rolled a four on my D4. Okay, so you do f- five damage. He takes an additional two from the car hitting the building and getting rattled around. He goes down hard, but he's still with it. This guy's young looking. He seems relatively fit, especially compared to the one that you uh, tackled in the room upstairs, uh, who seemed a little less uh, less able to fight back, I guess, is the... And he starts to he starts to get up. So as he's kind of scrambling, I'm gonna stand over him, just like, uh, you know, one leg on either side, and grab him and say, like, you can't escape me, and punch him, punch him in the face. Uh, go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a two rounded though. Am I doing the D4 again? Nope. Or just, okay. No, the, just the D4 a... was for how hard he hit right. the ground. Okay, so yeah, that's just one. Okay. Um, just a quick pop just yeah. to try to get him. He does not, he keeps fighting, and you see him pulling another uh, a knife out. He's mm-hmm. reaching, he, well, you see him reaching for a knife that you can see the hilt of now that you're like, you have a good vantage point. Dang it. And he, he, he's grabbing at you. This is, this is a brawl. This is dirty. This is not a graceful. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually going to need you to make an opposed fighting roll to keep a hold of him or he's going to get that knife and slash at you. Ooh, that's really bad. I would like to push that. Go ahead. That is much better. 18? 18 does not beat his 10. Oh, man. And he, you feel fingernails rake down your arm. Ah. You are wearing sleeves, um, but you can feel it. 
uh, just the, his fingers trying to dig into you, and he does pull that knife out and slash at you, um, but one damage. Okay. As he just, it doesn't get purchased, but he does get a slash in, um, and you do, you. your grip does falter, holding him. Um, hmm. And he starts to scramble backwards, trying to get to his feet, and you see him you know, gripping the knife like he's just going to fight. Mm-hmm. He's, he's done running. He's going to try to kill you now. Okay. I'm going to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> it is the scene from Indiana Jones. <laughs> okay. Uh, so he, he's scrabbling backwards. He's starting to get to his feet. You see that knife held in a, in a under grip. You're just going to pull the gun out and shoot? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go ahead and give me a... Go ahead and roll firearms. Let's see. There's always a chance your gun misfires. Oh wait, no. Ooh, that's bad. Um, what's what's the rules on pushing? Just I'm gonna let you roll a d20. Oh, in okay. addition to this, and subtract the d whatever you roll on the d20 from your roll as a okay. bonus. I mean, it's still quite bad, but uh, so I rolled a 90, and then I rolled a 15 on my d20. Okay, so, so that, that brings is, you down to 75. Yeah, mm-hmm. 75 over firearms. Oops, sorry. Um, 55. 75 over 55. You can push. You're going to have to spend some luck, but you can push it. Okay, I will do that. Um, how much luck is it? Uh, so I'm going to just have you spend five. Okay. I'm very, I, I do this rule very arbitrarily. I just kind of see to the pants, so just spend five, gotcha. and then you're going to roll again. Okay, so I'm rolling my D100 again? Yep, for the firearms. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jeez, that is also not good. That's a failure. Yeah, am I keeping, am I still doing this thing? It doesn't actually matter. No. Okay, eighty-two. Okay, fifty-five. You um, you grab your gun back out, uh, but oh. it, what, that was the arm that he lightly slashed. Mm-hmm. Um, and your your shot goes wide, um, and that does give him a chance to get to his feet, and he comes at you. Okay. So you get a dodge roll to see if he can hit you. Forty-seven, under fifty-five. Graceful, trained in martial arts. He slashes wildly, his foot catching some ice on the ground, and he spins and almost falls again as you just step back. Jerko, what would you like to do? <laughs> do you shoot again? Um, yeah, I don't. I don't really see a need to. As, as fun as it is to have a balletic, a balletic fight on the ice, <laughs> I think I'd just like to end this. So yes, I'm going to shoot at him. I think this is my last bullet, though. Jeez. Oh no, that's not. Horrible. How much luck would I need to spend to push this? What, it, what, it, what is your current? Oh, I'm a, so that's a 63 over, over 55. Two. Okay, I will do that. I'll get in a second. That is a 50 under 55. Okay. No, I'm sorry, that's a five. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> that's a five under 55. Okay, um, go ahead Thank and roll you. damage. Thank you, Norse Foundry, for sponsoring our show <laughs> and Absolutely. my blood pressure. <laughs> I think that was my the last bullet in this gun as well. Nope, you have one more. Oh, okay. That uh, gorgeous suit has red blood on it and <laughs> gunpowder residue. <laughs> I know. The moment he said his suit is white, I'm like, good luck keeping that one clean. Seven. You blow a hole in his chest. He... And collapses. <laughs> He is definitely dead. I will um, holster. Actually, I'll fling back my cape and holster the gun. Okay. <laughs> and okay. and then approach. Approach him. Yeah, I'll, I'll approach the body and okay. look over it just in case there's any evidence. Or... Cursory check the pockets. Blah blah blah. Yep. You pass that down. Okay. Splattered in blood. Mm-hmm. You find a folded up letter. Um, I'll just read it out loud. It's from Cairo, Egypt, 3rd March, 1919. Mr. Roger Carlyle, Carlyle House, Briarcliff Manor, New York. Dear Mr. Carlyle, your lawyer informed me that you seek certain knowledge of this land and its distant past, and I believe I can aid up, uh, aid you in this regard. Inquiries in the old quarter have identified one f- uh, far Fanny, shoot, Fanny Najar, this looks like F A N N Y N A J J A R. I think. Excuse me, that was. Uh, that looks like a Z. Faraz Najar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Or Ferez, perhaps? Najar, okay. Um, in the Street of Jackals, who claims mm-hmm. to be in possession of, quote, singular curios, unquote, which he believes will be of great interest to you. He is prepared to part with these items if a suitable price can be agreed upon, and I shall endeavor to make sure that matters are arranged to your satisfaction. Yours, M. Warren Bessart, I think. M. Warren B E S A R T. Bessart. Bessart. Yeah. Okay. And Gus rolls the window down and says, Sir, we should probably <laughs> uh, vacate the premises. A fine idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then once again, as I turn on, <laughs> flap the cape, get in the car. And our camera pans back over. <laughs> I imagine just like a riff on a guitar. Like, <laughs> get back in. Nicholas. Yes. Standing in the alley, this person, <coughs> life has bled out of him. Yeah. Uh, you did see a car speed down the road, but uh, you weren't able to, you, you didn't realize exactly that it was uh, Adrian. Um, and there is a crowd that has gathered. Okay. Are you waiting in the alley? Is there a crowd gathered around the speeding car? or the... Around the opening of the alley. I can't be here. Okay. <laughs> you make your, you, where are you heading? I'm going to head towards the other end of the alley. I'll connect with you guys later. Okay. So you head off. Yeah. Love, mm-hmm. Oliver, and Ophelia. Where are you going? Where are we going? I know a safe spot, but I don't know if... Oh. It's Nick. He'll know to meet. Uh, my place. Okay. And okay. I lead them to... Not the front entrance of mm-hmm. my practice. Okay. So you leave the hotel. Mm-hmm. You make your way out. Mm-hmm. You do have to push through some crowds. Um, mostly in the hallway on that floor, mm-hmm. uh, but also in the lobby. When you get outside, you can see a crowd formed at the head of the alley um, where the car had been, where Nicholas was. Um, but you turn and walk the other direction. Where is your practice? It's in a nicer part of New York. Okay. It's it's Manhattan still. Yeah. Okay. It's it's closer to where Love lives than to where I live. Okay. Um, I live eh, halfway between what you would consider a good neighborhood and a bad neighborhood. <laughs> Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, around. Okay, so at, so where you live is actually pretty close to Chelsea. Yes. Where your practice is is not. I'm. <laughs> I would assume that Nicholas has been to my place. Oh, uh, yes. Then I'm going to my apartment in Hell's Kitchen. Okay. So you turn, you make your way north-ish, mm-hmm. you head up that way, and you lead them towards Hell's Kitchen to, and towards your modest apartment. It's nicer than what I could have done had I not have an MD after my name. Sure. <laughs> Nicholas, hmm. do you, do you think to head towards Oliver's? Could I do like a intelligence, yeah, or I guess common sense roll? Yeah, give me an intelligence roll. Okay. Could could we say, in the interest of uh, group cohesion and storytelling, that like as I'm driving back, Nicholas sees my car, or I see him, or yeah, absolutely, okay. we can. Uh, I succeed, so thirty six under seventy. Okay. Uh, so I hop in the car. I tell, let's go to the apartment. So you, you head back towards the hotel because mm-hmm. you're like, okay, I'm going to go meet back up with them. Mm-hmm. And you see the crowds. Mm-hmm. And Gus says, uh, sir, um, <clears throat> might I suggest we don't return to the scene of whatever just happened? Can you all, and uh, have you filled Gus in on what happened while you were changing and everything? Yes. yes yeah. Okay. Uh, can I suggest we do not return to the scene of the crime? It's prudent thinking, Gus. I, I'd agree. And he, he just takes his car past the crowds. And loops around the side of the the next block. And that's where you see Nicholas. Flag him down. You hop in. Are you still dressed in the white suit? Absolutely not. (laughs) He's already changed back. I think the hat is an indicator. The white suit's in a garment bag that's shoved under his... What's this doing here? The the blood splatter clothes is in a garment bag up in the front seat with Gus now. (laughs) Uh, Adrian, we need to leave. 
that certainly makes sense. Any idea where to where we should leave? Oliver lives pretty close to here. We can start there, and if not, try to flag him down with a wire. Yeah. Did you have any luck with whatever you were pursuing? I just hold up the headband. It's a little oh. bloody. You also found the letter. Yep. Uh, I will share the letter and, and photograph. photograph. Oh. Well, that's funny. I, I attempted to to pursue as well, but a bit clumsy, I suppose. I slipped on the ice. But I, I did happen to find uh, this letter that I, I suppose one of them must have dropped along the way. Do you think, before I even look at the letter, do you think we should like tell authorities about Jackson getting, I don't know, mutilated upstairs? I've been thinking about that. Um, you see a other... cop car with Never. the lights on go flying towards the Chelsea Hotel. Okay. In most situations, I would agree with you, but this is a situation where the last people who are seen in contact with this person are the people who are running out of it, <laughs> out of the room. Uh, and there were multiple witnesses, I think. Okay. I'm not sure if we should do that oh, at point. this juncture. I trade letters with you? Sure. Uh, and before you trade that letter, actually, Nicholas, will you read your yes. letter oh, yeah, yeah. for everyone? It is from a... A Miriam Artwright. Uh, did you find ooh, that one voice. in... Do the voice. <laughs> do the voice. Do the voice. Um, <laughs> did you find that one in the I found thug's pocket? In or? the thug's jacket. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, to Mr. Jackson Elias, Prospero House Publishers, Lexington Avenue, New York City. Dear Mr. Elias, the book about which you inquired is no longer in our connection. The information you seek may be found here in our other volumes. If you will contact me upon arrival, I will be most happy to further assist you. Miriam Artright, Harvard University Library. And that's dated November 7th, 1924. So it's about two months old. Okay. And you direct Gus where to drive to I get do. to yes. Oliver's? Oliver. Um, they actually get there before you almost. As you're walking up, you see, uh, will you describe your car, um, Adrian? Mm. Sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> um, my car is a Rolls-Royce Phantom. I, so I believe it's rather large and rather sleek. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, large and sleek. I don't know cars well <laughs> enough to, <laughs> to describe And a them. little out of place in Hell's Kitchen. Sure, um, yeah. That's, I mean, it, it also looks expensive. As you <laughs> approach your building you see oh thank god a um, silver i believe yes rolls royce phantom idling out front i would assume i know adrian's car uh if you didn't you can assume yeah <laughs> and love you would recognize this car thank god um and i i look are they still in the car i'm assuming your windows are tinted uh yes <laughs> yes dark. but that's all right i'll i'll um I will say a hell of a good drive, Gus, and I'll actually give him a surreptitious wink uh, and step out of the car. He just nods. Our new theory is you're sleeping with your driver. <laughs> <laughs> Am I? Or is the other guy? <laughs> <laughs> For all of you, it has been a incredibly traumatic evening so far, and it is not even nine o'clock yet. Less than an hour has gone by since you found your friend Jackson Elias butchered in his hotel, his hotel room. As you make your way up into, uh, do you own or do you rent? I think with the help of my lovely sister, oh, I no, own. Sorry. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, it is I'm not, uninhabited. I'm not assuming. Save for my lovely cat, Molly. Okay. You head up to the... You own the building. Um, but you keep modest quarters for yourself yeah. in probably the second floor, I would assume. You head up. Molly rubs up against your legs, purrs. And you welcome your friends into your apartment. I say nothing, I go to the counter, I pull out a very nice vintage of, uh, I would assume, whiskey. Okay. That's what Oliver would drink. It's probably a 25-year-old scotch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Five glasses. It's okay. Yeah, just, just immediately. I don't say anything, I just put them in front of people. 
Who am I to deny a doctor's prescription? <laughs> <laughs> and you I all see sit. The time, Adrian. <laughs> you all sit. This is the first time all five of you have been able to rest since all of this started. And the weight of it all kind of falls down on you. You can hear sounds of the city street outside. You hear the sound of a radio coming from somewhere, drifting through the building. But it's quiet. Shit. You all remembered how I stated that when the five of us come together, it doesn't necessarily bode well. Yeah. This, uh, this is what I was referring to. But I also think that without the five of us, at least three of us would be dead. Did he... Did he know this was going to happen? It... It looks like... Do we do we all, like, compare what we found? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Do you? <laughs> I would absolutely show what I found on Jackson. Okay, so you pull out the... Bi- uh, the business card and the matchbook. He went somewhere and was going somewhere. I have a place and a name. Um, I still think that checking out the Stumbling Tiger wouldn't be terrible. Um, but I, I don't know if he made it this far. <laughs> Have I heard anything about the Stumbling Tiger? Does it have a reputation for anything in the city? Love, give me a credit rating roll. Ooh, yeah. Do not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pushing it. Okay. Uh, spe- give me, uh, what, what did you roll? Uh, 73 over 70. Give me one luck. Okay. 58 under 70. You've never heard of the Stumbling Tiger before. Hmm. You have been to every speakeasy Mm -hmm. in this city. If it exists, you've been there. That's not a real place. (laughs) Have I heard of it? Because I've been to Chinatown. I said, you think you might have seen it. You know, you've seen, seen that imagery, seen something. Go ahead and give me an intelligence roll. We'll call this memory. God. Yeah, I want to push. Okay, what did you roll? 85 over 75. Or 81 over 75. It, one. One luck. Ooh. I rolled the same Look thing. <laughs> yeah, no, you are. You, you you actually argue with love a little bit. If, love, if you say like that, you say that place doesn't exist, you're like, I know I've seen it. I in swear I've seen it. It's on Lantern Street. I get. So much of my shit from there. I've been to Lantern Street a hundred times. I've never seen it. How many times have you been there and not been blackout drunk? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. That is actually a very fair point, Yeah, I know, exactly. And I know for a fact that even when you're sober, you can't read Chinese. Um, Adrian, (laughs) do you frequent speakeasies? I'd say so. Go ahead and give me, also give me an intelligence roll. Fail my highest roll. (laughs) <laughs> that is certainly not my highest. That is a 63 over 45. I think I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> okay. You 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 just aren't sure. Mm-hmm. You 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 think about it for a minute. You don't think you if 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 it's a speakeasy in Chinatown, you haven't been there. Uh, Oliver will use one of these matches to light a cigarette. Okay. For the rest of you, you have a letter from a librarian in at Harvard. Mm-hmm. You have a letter from some sort of antiquarian or collector. Mm-hmm. You have a blurry photo of a ship. Can you actually hand that to me? Yes. Uh, it's got Chinese ships. It's got a Union Jack flag bearing steamship uh, architecture I don't recognize though. It looks to me, I mean, I haven't been many places, it looks like it could be London. Mm -hmm. Um, For those of you looking at the photo, 
um, as it gets passed around. Go ahead and give me a library use roll. No, I was gonna say, as like an archivist, I should know the librarian of the Harvard University because oh a lot of librarians know that's, that's each a, other. I'm gonna just say you do. I'm it's not such a you small. You absolutely know this person. You've probably met them, if not at a talk, if not at a conference, yeah. because you were there or she came here. Yeah. Um. What did you get for the library use roll? So my library use is 20. Yeah. I rolled a four, <laughs> which is a nice. quarter of my you, shit. You, you're looking at the photo, and you go, wait a minute. And you, like, push, like, a half-eaten Chinese food container, like, <laughs> a, a, off of a copy of, like, a back issue of National Geographic mm -hmm. on your coffee table. And you pick it up, and you flip it open, and you it's literally the same architecture. Nice. It's almost the same angle of photo. Where is it? Shanghai. Ooh. And this is, at, I want to note, this is a photo. This is not from mm -hmm. a newspaper. This is a photo that he, he had in his possession if he didn't take it. Mm. Um, but yeah, this is definitely the Wangpu River in Shanghai. Mm. The uh, you, you, you did say Wangpu? W-H-A-N-G-P-O-O. -O. Okay. First titty cock on that one. <laughs> I know. I'm serious. Come on. <laughs> Are there are there like places like this in every country that I just don't know about? You're gonna <laughs> yes. You're gonna awesome. send us to the most giggle-inducing places. You know, yeah. welcome to Dick Boob Plaza. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, obviously, uh, the photo in National Geographic doesn't have the same ships in it, mm -hmm. but uh, the are the buildings in the background are the same. I have a question. Sure. Uh, Given my history, is there any way I can recognize the name of this ship based on the first three letters? Give me a credit rating roll. Wonderful. What's your history? Wouldn't you like to know? Yeah, I would. We would like to know. <laughs> <Yes>. I would. <laughs> Wrong dice. Yeah, definitely not a D20 and a D12. <laughs> Are you... <laughs> that is literally your highest skill. Man. You are not, you, y'all need, need to. So it's not just me. Y'all need to us. stop failing your best skills. We have seen several dead bodies North and caused Foundry several dead bodies. <laughs> like, love is supposed to be beautiful and rich, and instead she's just like, she's buff as all get out. <laughs> <laughs> Dexterity, I got this. Yes. Being rich, apparently I'm bad at that. You statted for a sorcerer and ended up with a rogue. <laughs> apparently. Um, I got a 95 of over 70. Oh, man. Do you want to um, push it? I do want to push it. Go ahead and give me... That's going to cost you a little luck, but you can do it. Take three away. Bring it. Just because that's a 95. Woof. That's rough. That's sucky. You get poorer. Do you want to use my... Deck? You do get poorer. <laughs> no, I got this. You have to spend money to figure this out. <laughs> spend money to make money. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to snap psychologically. Oh, <laughs> 73 over... Seven. Oh. Nicholas just takes Rhea. a step back from love as he sees seething. <laughs> Rhea ever... loses a point of stability. <laughs> the, the photo, <laughs> like, like, not completely, but just, like, grip the photo harder so it, like, crumples a little bit. You're like, you can't pull it out of her grip. Oh She's God, just... Love. Mm. I know this boat. You do think you recognize it. I'm going to say, love, hold on to that photo. You're a little obsessed over this right now. Yeah. It'll come to me. Um, do I, do I recognize any of these places? Um, so the pen, so going through your mm -hmm. things you found, mm -hmm. you have a letter from someone from Cairo, Egypt. Mm -hmm. You have a, po you have a business card for an Edward Gavigan, the director of the Penhew Foundation in London. You have a matchbook for the Stumbling Tiger Bar. I'm giving up on this one for right now. Can I see that for a second? Here you go. <laughs> ah. Aww. Can I still right go there. to this? Is there time? <laughs> I to make it across town. Y'all, it literally says Shanghai on the matchbook. <laughs> That's what <laughs> 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 
It like, literally says Shanghai so on the matchbook. Like physically, it honest. does. Have us roll to notice that it says Shanghai Fun and Friends. Wait, that look, could have been like an establishment. I don't mean to get too meta, but whoever is rolling for us up there, yeah, roll, roll poorly. Whatever god of intelligence. <laughs> yes. Okay, carry on. Ophelia, you, um, some stuff. I was looking more towards do as somebody who is has a doctorate and has spent a considerable amount of my time and life in school. Uh, do I recognize any of the names from the Harvard Library? No. The Do I recognize any of the names from um, the Miskatonic University? No. I do. Do I recognize Emerson and Lawrence? <coughs> no. All right. The only thing you might recognize, I will give you this, Emerson Imports, you might have picked up some off-market herbs and medicines from that came in from Emerson Imports, mm-hmm. but nothing specific, nothing rings a bell. Um, you have a photo of a ship and a river in Shanghai, China. You have a business card for an Emerson Imports with the name Silas on the back, mm-hmm. Naquani. And you have a letter to Jackson Elias, care of Prospero House Publishers in New York City, from a Miriam Atwright from Harvard University in Cambridge. Yes. And last but not least, you have a pamphlet for a talk happening tonight. Well, does it say the date on it? No, it just says tonight only. Okay. Mm. Happening tonight only at 8 p.m. <laughs> On cults of darkness in Polynesia and the Southwest Pacific. So it could be for tomorrow How? night. Now I will say, for <laughs> um, <yesterday. clears throat> for Ophelia's sake, the talk already happened. It's not literally tonight. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sad. <laughs> in fact, you're pretty sure you remember talking to Jackson about it after he went to okay. it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Which one of these places is the closest to us? Emerson Imports oh. or Prospero House. Prospero House is in New York City. And if you take a look at Emerson Imports, so is that. Now, Emerson Imports is at 648 West 47th Street. Yes. Mm-hmm. Prospero House is on Lexington Avenue. Lexington. Those are both pretty, pretty easy cool. for you to get to. Yeah. Yep. You could go to either of them now, but it is a little after 9 p.m. So, sorry. Did the 1920s have the subway? Or was it just like taxis? Ooh, good question. Hold on. Like how... Rail Railway lines connect the city to the suburbs and the rest of America through a con- comprehensive mm-hmm. local and national network. That's cool. Um, tr- more likely trolley cars at this point mm-hmm. in time. Mm-hmm. But there is local rail. Nice. L-I-R-R-M. Now To get to the suburb, Long Island, yeah. I assume, and then... Yeah. yeah. It's more for to get between the boroughs in Long Island yeah. um, and Westchester. Yeah. But there are, there are trolleys. There are trolley cars. There are taxis. And you could also have... You also have a Gus. <laughs> oh, yeah. And also, a Rolls-Royce Phantom is a pseudo-limo. All five of you can fit comfortably inside mm-hmm. it. Okay. What would you all like to do now? Well, uh, it seems to me this... We're staring at puzzle pieces with no... Mm-hmm. No information about how they connect. I mm-hmm. suppose we try to find out more about these pieces. The <clears throat> excuse me. The library is relatively close. Mm-hmm. I presume at this time of night it's not open any longer. The publishers is close. Or, Publisher house. Yes, correct. Yeah. The, so, the libraries close. in Harvard. Wouldn't right. the publisher be closed? I Probably. would assume so. So perhaps this is something we can look into tomorrow. I at the same time it's also been a pretty hectic night for all of us. I don't know that we should be rushing out. Might I make a suggestion? Um, the place is not super big, but if I get enough blankets out, you guys can crash here. None of you are allergic to cats, right? <laughs> Lovely. Um, yeah, I'll make dinner. Okay. Let's see you all tuck in. Do you let Gus know he can head out or come up and rest? Um, I 
presume he has a phone back at home where I, mm-hmm. I have a way of contacting him. So yeah, I'll just I'll tell him to. Okay, you head down. Let Gus know he can go home. Mm-hmm. You're gonna stay here. Yes. Precious. And you settle in, and so that you can rest and think about what your next steps are. Did you have something? I did. Before we end. Yeah, just before for tonight, she rests. Love. What would you like to do? Uh, before she goes to bed that night, she's going to get in contact with Andrew Acosta. Okay. And give him the license plate number of that car to see who it's, it's registered with. Okay. If possible. Sure. I want to know who sent these people. Okay. And then she goes to sleep. Love borrows your phone, makes a phone call. With the, with that license plate, is that like a company license plate? or Because... No. Yeah. License because plates back then were pretty uh, yeah, they basic. They were smaller? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. There were less cars. Yeah. <laughs> uh, true. Yeah. It was number 17. <laughs> <laughs> this man's social security number was one. <laughs> social security numbers hadn't been invented yet. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you all hunker down and you rest. And anyone who has taken damage this evening can recover two. Mm. Go for it. Uh, Oliver, you can recover two stability as well Mm. for cuddling with your cat. Yeah. How does one? Oop! Didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, How does one recover luck generally? When we do uh, your character um, growth, gotcha. whatever it's called, uh, character development sessions, mm-hmm. uh, I will give you an amount to increase it back up to. But that Oops. is where we're going to end tonight's session. All right. So uh, sit back. We'll be back next week with episode five and see what happens in New York City. New York City. Oh, I thought we were all gone. (laughs) 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 Good night, everyone. Good night. Dressing gown awaits for your return.